Bonjour. Brian, right here. Looking fly. What's up with the with the outfit? Right here. Yeah. Man, you know what I'm saying? We're in France. It's it's fashion week, you know what I'm saying? So I had to come out styling, you feel me? You're looking like Charles Oliveira right now. Bro. Look good, feel good, fight good. I get that a lot. It's the blonde hair and the tattoos, you know what I'm saying? I and I think the skin complexion, too, you know what I'm saying? It's not something I was necessarily trying to do, but it's funny. People who don't know who I am, you know what I'm saying? I'll just be like, people come up to me, they'll be like, hey, hey, you look just like Charles. They, they don't know that I fight or anything. They'll be like, you just you look just like Charles Oliveira. I'm like, yeah, I like, I'll think they'll be like, you, are you Brian Battle? And they'll be like, no, you look just like Charles Oliveira. I'm like, ah, shit. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> it's better than long hair, at least, brother. It looks good. Hey, you know, uh, thank you. I appreciate that. You know what I mean? So I've been asking qu uh, my fans, followers, a lot of questions like, hey, what would you like to ask Brian Battle? And a lot of the questions were, why did you change your iconic nickname to The Butcher? Um, it was really just a shift in mentality, you know what I'm saying? Um, Pooh Bear was something uh, that I got as an amateur, you know what I mean? And um, that was just like a different guy in a different time, you know what I'm saying? There was a, a point where I was uh, really uh, – I was about to go fight Trey Sean, you know what I mean? And I was in the back. And I'm looking at all the killers in the back, you know what I'm saying? Like, Shavkat was back there, you know what I'm saying? There was a, a, a couple other killers, and um, it really dawned on me that it was like, if I want to compete at the highest level, I can't be the same guy that I've always been, you know what I'm saying? I have to, I have to change, I have to become more ruthless, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, you know, that's that, and, and in that process, you know what I mean, like, searching for who that person is it was the butcher you know what i'm saying the butcher killed Pooh Bear. you know what i mean so it's like if someone wants to call me Pooh Bear, that's okay but um that's just not who enters the cage nowadays you know what i'm saying i think you can look at the results of my fight since then you know what i'm saying back in the day one of the things people used to say is oh, he's very tough you know what i'm saying my my agent used to say i'm a cockroach it's hard to kill me since then it's like now i'm finishing people in the first round you know what i mean i'm getting finishes you know what i mean so um I've elevated my game. I've elevated my mentality, and uh, I'm killing people, so I'm the butcher. So when you first started MMA back in the amateur days, you said, after one loss, I'm retiring from MMA. But then in your first fight, you got head kicked right away. Yeah. What made you say, like, hey, let's try it again? Well, you know, it was – I got started so late. I was 21 when I started training, so it was just like – and I'm training all the time, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm dropped out of school, you know what I mean? Um, and so it was like, okay, you know, I'll fight. I'll have – I'll keep on going until I lose. And then after I lose, you know, I'll get a real job. I'll be responsible. And, uh, yeah, like you said, my first amateur fight, I'm heavyweight. I get knocked out. It goes viral low-key. Uh, and it's just like, you know, I can't go out like that. You know what I'm saying? There's no way. You know, it's, by that time, I'd already fell in love with the game. So um, – after that, it was just a matter of making the changes I need to make and to come back stronger. I won the next eight fights, became one of the top-ranked amateurs in two-weight division in, in, in my country. So, you know, um, and then in that process, I was like, yeah, I'm not stopping. I'm not stopping. I'm going all the way to the top. So, uh, yeah, it was it was funny. Um, I think I just told myself to make it easier to get into it, but um, I don't think I ever really was going to stop. You know what I mean? I've seen you post a lot of quotes lately on your stories. Is there one particular one that really resonates with you right now? Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of quotes. There's a, there's a lot of quotes. Um, you know, part of that is like uh, my Instagram algorithm is seen that I'm like really into this stuff. Um, but just anything about just being relentless and pursuing your dreams, pursuing your goals, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, you know, doing what you were meant to do. You know what I'm saying? I think there's a lot of times that, you know, we let the world tell us and dictate what we should be doing, what we're supposed to be doing instead of, uh, you know, doing what we were created to do. You know, um, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm doing what I was created to do. I think I was created to fight people. I think I was created to go conquer. You know what I'm saying? So um, as I'm pursuing that, you know, if anytime I see something along those lines, as far as a quote, I got to repost it. I got to share it because I want to encourage people to also do whatever they're supposed to be doing. You know what I'm saying? Whatever they're created to do, whether that's something in the arts, whether that's music, whether that's business, whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
you know, each of us is special in our own way. Be special in your own way. Don't let don't let people tell you what you need to do. You know what I mean? Last question for me. You called Ian Gary a big blonde doofus. What's your problem with him? <laughs> Yo, listen. Uh, at first, at first, it was really just like he had a lot of hype, and it was someone that I knew I could beat. You know what I mean? Uh, then on that card, um, we both fought on that card. So, you know, we're rubbing shoulders and, um, it, he did some things that I just didn't like. I didn't, I didn't, it, it really actually soured my taste towards him. Like before it was just like a friendly rival. Like it's like, okay, he, he's, he's where I want to get to. You know what I'm saying? I want to steal his clout. Now it's like, I actually really just don't like him. He's a cringy dude. You know what I'm saying? Like he's a talented fighter. You know what I'm saying? But, um, like, you know, like, even that fight week, he left um, a pizza at D-Rod's door. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not funny to me. That's just a dickhead move. You know what I'm saying? So he does he does things that aren't funny to me. He's just, like, dickhead stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, you know, he's good. Uh, everything he's got, he deserves. He's earned it. But um, for sure, like, I've told him to his face, I'd knock him out. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, he... He didn't, he didn't say, he didn't tell me he'd knock me out back. He was like, oh, okay, well, you know, get a couple more wins, get a couple more wins. So, you know, um, that's not, that's not what I'm thinking about right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, honestly, I wish I would have said less about him because people keep on asking me about him and he's not going to fight me. You know what I mean? So, um, I hope, uh, everything's going well for him and his family. I hope he continues to win. And, uh, if he continues to win, and I do what I'm going to do, then we'll, the, the meeting will be, be inevitable. Hopefully I can be the first person to beat him. You know what I'm saying? I like taking people's O's, but that's not something I'm thinking about too much right now. Thank you. Yes, hey, sir. Brian, here in the back. Uh, when we look at the beginning of your career, you fought already some big names. Impa, for example, uh, Cody Brundage. Uh, oh, you're looking at the amateur days. That's what I'm talking about. See, nobody talks about that. Nobody talks about that. I'm like, All right, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's from Bow to the Koi, so you know who asked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but uh, if you look back at it, Impa became a champ. Uh, Cody has a, has a good career. Um, what's something you look forward to in your career, and do you imagine yourself becoming a champion? Which is kind of a crazy question because you do, but how do you see that path going for you? Well, um, just off the rip, you know, um, I was very fortunate to fight guys like them as an amateur, and um, uh, to this day, I'll say the hardest puncher I ever went against was this guy named Billy Elicana. I think he's with the PFL in some way, shape, or form right now. Um, and fighting killers like that as an amateur really got me ready to go pro. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I got a late start. I kind of speed ran my amateur career. I got 10 fights, but I got like 10 fights in like two years. You know what I mean? Um, and so it, it was funny because, you know, fighting people like Impa, fighting people like Cody, you know what I'm saying? Um, it, it made the beginning of my pro career kind of easy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Fighting people, I'm like, well, this, this dude's not as good as Impa. You know what I'm saying? And um, it, it was – what was interesting about that is, like, uh, there was a period of time where it was actually kind of hard because having an amateur career like that made it hard to get fights, and I have to watch guys I beat in the amateurs, like, get to the UFC before me. That was that was kind of tough, but – um. Yeah, man. No, of course. I mean, regardless of who I fought, you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm going to the top. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's a matter of when, not if. So, um, yeah, I will be a champion one day. I, lo I look forward to holding the belt. And I look forward to keep on working and getting better until uh, that opportunity comes. Looking at the less brighter side of MMA, your last four fights have been a bit of a rocky road with the dec decision loss against Renat, then the weight, and then winning, coming back. Um, does it do something to the mental part of fighting or are you like, okay, that happened and now I have to look forward? Um, it might seem like a rocky road from the outside looking in. It wasn't a rocky road to me. I mean, um, Renat, like something I don't talk about a lot is like one, I took that fight on two weeks notice. You know what I'm saying? I blew my knee out 10 days before the fight. You know what I'm saying? Didn't tell anybody that I was fighting on one leg. You know what I mean? And then. I was in the hospital the day before that fight. You know what I'm saying? I got really, really sick. You know what I'm saying? So um, I was a fraction of myself going into that fight. You know what I mean? Um, so it it was tough. Um, I hated it. It made me look really bad because it was a really bad fight. You know what I'm saying? All respect to Renat. He beat the snot out of me in that fight. But it's not something where it really 
bothers me too much looking back. I, I, the only thing that bothers me is like the impression that it left on the fans. Um, but me personally, I know I'm way, 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 way better than that at the time. But even with that being said, um, there were still things I learned that I could get better at from that fight. So, you know, it, it, it was just a step, you know what I mean? Um, I had to learn a lesson and I learned it. You know what I mean? After that, you know what I'm saying? I knocked out Gabe. You know what I'm saying? After that, I choked out AJ. After that, I mean, people talk about the no contest. That 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 don't bother me. I was beating the shit out of them. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody who watches that fight know that I was en route to winning that fight. So, you know, um, you know, it's a little annoying. I wish I would have got the dub, but it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, my stock's still going up. I'm going to come out here on Saturday night, put on a show, and uh, we're going to keep on climbing. Well, good luck with your fight, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Brian. Um, some question from uh, Twitch channel and friends. Okay. Um, first question is, how would you describe your opponent, Kevin Jusse, as you know him as a fighter right now? Um, he is uh, technically sound. You know what I'm saying? He's got a good size, good frame for the weight division. You know what I'm saying? He trains at a reputable gym. So, you know, um, he's going to be well prepared. Um, he's a little boring. You know what I'm saying? In my opinion, you know what I'm saying? Um, and um, I respect him. I've been training really, really hard, but I'm, I'm going to blow him out the water. And um, is Paris and, like, the atmosphere of this arena, which is famous uh, around the world in the UFC, the perfect stage for someone like you that brings so much into the cage, but also the personality, the way you look and everything? Could it be the biggest stage that takes you to the next level? Um... Hopefully, I mean, you know, it, uh, I love fighting in front of the fans. That's something I haven't had the opportunity to do a lot uh, of since I've been in the UFC. You know what I'm saying? Coming from the ultimate fighter during COVID to um, having the bulk of my fights in the apex since then. Um, something I was blessed with, the opportunity I was blessed with was to fight in my hometown and to get that uh, feeling of not only fighting in an arena, but fighting in an arena where, you know, people are going crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, people still, that was... Um, over a year ago, and people still to this day, you know, they come up to me, they're like, I was there, I've never experienced anything like that in my life, you know what I'm saying, the way the roof came off, and the, the vibes and the energy that were in there, so um, I'm I'm someone who rises to the occasion, you know what I'm saying, the more energy, the better, you know what I'm saying, the bigger the stage, the better, the brighter the lights, the better, so uh, I'm looking forward to it, you know what I mean, but with all that being said, a fight is a fight is a fight is a fight, you know what I'm saying, I'd, I'd fight Kevin in someone's basement, you know what I'm saying, if, if if that's what it came down to. So um, I'm looking forward to it for sure. I love the platform, but um, bottom line is we got to take care of business, you know what I'm saying? And whether that's in the world's biggest arena or somewhere where no one can see us, I still got to handle business. So, yeah. All right. And uh, two last questions quick. Um MMA is becoming huge in France. We have a lot of amateurs. We also have like famous uh, amateur fighter in France. What type of, of um, advices would you give to young people starting MMA with amateur career? Because it was your, um, it was your past. Um, the the biggest thing I'd say is kind of like what I was talking about earlier: relentlessly chasing improvement. You know what I mean? Like, uh, especially as an amateur, you don't worry about the wins and the losses. You know what I'm saying? As soon as you turn pro, all those wins and losses go away. Relentlessly uh, pursue improvement. Fight the toughest people you can. Get all the looks that you can. You know what I'm saying? Stay consistent in the gym. You know what I mean? A lot of people think they got to train all the time. As an amateur, you're not getting paid unless you get sponsors. So it's it's really more important to, you know, if you have to work a job, find four days, three days a week that you know you're going to be at there every week. You know what I'm saying? Constantly improving and make the most of the time that you're training. You know what I'm saying? It's not about the time in. It's about what you do with that time. So um, as an amateur, you know, don't don't worry about clout. Don't worry about how it looks. You know what I'm saying? Fight tough people. Get better. Fill holes. And then um, get ready to kill things as a pro. All right. And last one for me. Um, is battle going to bring a war so the night? Pardon? <laughs> is Brian Battle going to bring a war in the arena Saturday night? 
I don't know about a war. All, all I know is I'm coming in as the best, most vicious version of myself. I'm looking to kill somebody Saturday night. So, you know, if it's a war, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Kevin. But uh, I'm really coming out there to, to run through him. All right. Thank you. Just one here, Brian. Uh, thanks for coming in Paris. Uh, one question. Do you think the winner of this fight will get a chance to a top 15 guy? You was asking for a ranked guy uh, after your la last fight, and you got Kevin Jose. Is this the same? So what do you think is the future for the winner? Well, I mean, speaking for me, I mean, I'm 5-1-1. One, one. I should be 6-1. and one, You know what I'm saying? I mean, he's 2-0, and oh, so... Um, It's one of those things I've learned, like, not to be too concerned about. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going to keep on stacking up wins and keeping on um, stacking up my highlight reel. You know what I mean? Just keep on collecting finishes, keep on collecting checks. Because um, I know those things will come. You know what I'm saying? If I keep on going out there performing, those things will come. Um, I can't speak for how Kevin Jusay feels. I mean, I would be a massive win for him. Um, but, you know, for me... You know what I'm saying? It's 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 a much bigger win for him than it is for me. So, um, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go out there, put on a show, perform. And uh, if they match, if they if they want to match me up with someone in the top 15, we'll see if they say yes. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the other thing. Motherfuckers got to say yes to the fight. That's That's been tough. You know what I mean? So we'll see. We'll see what happens. And can you give us a prediction maybe for the fight? Um, it'll be over by round two. Um, by the end of round two. By the end of round two. Strike submission. Uh, knockout. Thanks. One more for me. Mm -hmm. Last time out, you had some weight issues because you came in on way too early. So, is there something you're going to be doing different now, or is it just going to be the same and hoping it's going to be normal now? Well, it's funny. I wouldn't say weight issues necessarily. I did. Um get on weight uh probably eight hours before the weigh-in on accident like i was just trying to make sure i was in a good position to 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 make weight right before the fight and then you know i take a hot bath boom i'm on weight and it's like wow and then so you know yeah i was cramping it was it was a pain in the butt but um you know i'd rather deal with that than being stressed out you know what i'm saying right before the weigh-ins um with that being said yeah you know what i'm saying uh This whole game, every part about it is learning what you can. You know what I'm saying? So um, now I've put on some more muscle, so my body's just holding more water. It's easier to cut water. So um, I, I kept that in mind. Um, honestly, like um, right now, my weight is lower at this stage of fight week than it was last time. So um, we're just going to keep on training, keep on doing what I'm doing. I'm going to keep on water loading. I'm going to look at where I wake up tomorrow morning. Based off where I wake off to wake up tomorrow morning, I might not do very much tomorrow, and then just save a lot of the cut for early Friday morning. But um, yeah, that was definitely a learning experience right there. I did not expect because normally, normally it comes down to the wire when I'm cutting, especially 170. It comes down to the wire. Um, but you know, I've been at 170 for a little bit now. My uh, body's a little bit more tuned in. Uh, my mind's a little bit more tuned into my body, so um, less less. Uh, There's less questions, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I know one plus one equals two, you know what I'm saying? So it's an easier equation. Thank you.